Hey guys, welcome to Bominate. My name is Brooke. Um, this week, my little sister introduced me to a uh, documentary, Minimalism, that I found on Netflix. I'm so glad she did. Been really powerful. In a lot of ways, it just like epitomizes what this YouTube channel is about for me. It's living a deliberate, more meaningful life. Um, just like the minimalists in this documentary, I want to sift through just all the nonsense that's distracting me, you know, from just living my best life. Um, in regards to consumerism, I wouldn't say that this is uh, an overpowering issue for me. I've always loved just getting rid of crap. I love it. It gives me a high. I don't get the same high from like shopping, where I overconsume is convenience purchases. Like I could twenty dollar to death our finances, but. That is another topic for another day. <laughs> so um, what really affected me the most in this documentary, though, is that minimalism um, isn't just about the amount of crap we hold on to. It's minimalizing our need for excess in any shape or form. And as I watched it, I just it overwhelmingly hit home in regards to my need for career achievement. Um, I really related, there's an excerpt in the book, Everything That Remains, which is a book uh, Joshua Fields, the uh, maker of the documentary, wrote. And it was just about, you know, how his threshold, threshold for uh, pleasure changed, you know, in the bar raised with each promotion and the more money he made. Um, he just, it was never enough. It's like a cocaine high. He always wanted more. Um, that is what I relate right now, what I'm going through with my my business success. You know, I um, in starting each of our ventures, I kind of thought that I'd like experience some sort of like lasting peace. It's like I'd just somehow magically just feel more secure, you know, but you know, like a sufferer of an eating disorder who can't escape dealing with food, I have to be able to balance my relationship with ambition and achievement. You know, my relationship it just has to be rehabbed. Um, I this documentary made like my husband and I really grateful and um, just about the opportunity we have to work for ourselves. A lot of the people that were interviewed talked about the climb up the corporate ladder and just how dissatisfying it was and what evoked you know their need to change their lives. Um, when Gabe and I graduated college, we moved to New York City. Gabe got a job working for one of the most elite interior designers in the world. I worked as a guidance counselor for um, an overage, undercredited high school in Brooklyn. Uh, the high school was across the street from the projects where Notorious B.I.G. grew up, and which is insane. <laughs> it was crazy, but. <laughs> the principal of the school was just really supportive of me, you know, as this like insanely enthusiastic kid from Utah. I just wanted to change the world, just want to please. So she was totally committed to mentoring me along the path to one day uh, being the principal of these same schools. Um, but, you know, so both Gabe and I had these insane opportunities for growth in the fields that we that we loved, you know, but after a year, we just came to this abrupt realization that this isn't the life we want. We didn't want our path dictated by someone else. So we decided to go back to graduate school so Gabe would be able to teach at the collegiate level as a backup, you know, just while we kind of figured out how we could work for ourselves. So we just didn't waste, you know, any time taking matters into our own hands. But um, in making the decision to work for ourselves, we knew our hustle would have to be relentless and it has been you know since that moment um, in the past two years we've really experienced a lot of growth and you know amidst all the panic and anxiety we've had a few brief moments where Gabe and I have just looked at each other and been overwhelmed with you know humility and gratitude that it's like coming together but after that very brief moment it's right back to the grind and I haven't really celebrated the feats along the way. You know, I've just been in this mad dash for years and I'm waking up in my 30s now and I'm realizing that unless I make a huge change, I'll be in this same mad dash for the next several decades of my working life, you know, uh, just without a real understanding of what I'm dashing for, you know. Yes, I'm dashing for, for my kids, for their future, for financial freedom, but I'm not being deliberate with my path. You know, it's success for success's sake. So 
I just need to pause and contemplate what the effect my sprint to the finish line mentality has on the quality of my life. This attitude doesn't set a good example for my kids. Work ethic does, ambition does, but doing it without thought of how each effort will affect our lives is just living blindly. You know, Gabe and I have the same values and that we, we want financial freedom, but that's so broad, what does that mean? So, you know, in applying the, the minimalistic approach, um, I'm just trying to make deliberate goals of what financial freedom means. You know, and I think it's really critical to have these goals set out so that when the opportunity um, presents itself that we don't get caught up in excess. I don't have that opportunity now because we have a lot of, we have a lot of debt, but the time will come. That's what we're working towards, hopefully. So, you know, when I think of freedom, I think of being debt free. Um, and I imagine, I imagine the freedom of paying off our student loans, our mortgage, like our business debts. And the sheer thought of it just makes me, uh, it just makes me feel lighter. You know, there, and I just feel like there should be more pride in living within our means rather than, you know, upgrading uh, without being, you know, upgrading on credit that we can just be, live confidently in our means. Um, when I think of hustling for my kids, I think of experiences rather than things. We get so distracted with things, but to have the opportunity to sacrifice so we can travel and learn about the world together as a family, to set aside means to give back and the joy that comes from service, that's going to be so much more meaningful to them as they age than luxuries. You know, we don't get these years back. We don't get a second chance to instill values in our kids. It's our time now. You know, I don't want to miss the point before it's too late. I want my kids to see me living a meaningful life every single day. You know, so I haven't wrapped um, my head around the entirety of minimalism. You know, I think it's just like a journey that I'm going to have to pursue uh, continually and just see how it uniquely applies to my life. Um, I do know how I can measure where I'm at at any given moment that, and that's to imagine myself in my deathbed in the last moments of my life reflecting on, on my choices. Um, you know, will I be proud of the choices I'm making that day in that moment? Um, you know, I, I highly recommend that you implement this visualization. The image of it just doesn't lie. We're all going to be there one day. We'll all have the moment to reflect on our regrets. You know, I just want as few regrets as possible. So guys, I want you to uh, check out Minimalism on Netflix. The link is in the comments below. And I also recommend you read Everything That Remains by Joshua Fields. And again, that link is included below. Please show me some love and subscribe. And um, I'd also love to hear about, after you watch this documentary, what you think and how it affects you. I think it'll speak to everyone really differently. Um, you know, just how it spoke to my excess in, in need for achievement. I think other people, it'll hit a lot of different areas. So I'd be really interested to see how it affects each of you. So please share your experiences and thank you guys so much for sharing this experience with me.